Hey, come on, can we give Jesus all the praise, everybody? If you're in the room, if you're watching online, come on, literally give Jesus the best praise you got, God, we love you. And y'all can grab a seat. If you're watching online, <laughs> grab a seat. You might already be sitting down, I don't know. But we're gonna hang today, we're gonna have a good time. Thank y'all for having me. Detroit, Michigan, come on, somebody. Detroit, this is my second time to come to Detroit. The last time I was here, I went to a Red Wings game. That was pretty awesome. I became a hockey fan pretty quickly. And so now we're rolling into Nashville and they got the Preds. I don't know if that's like an enemy to the Red Wings or not, but we gotta be Preds fans now because we're in Nashville, Tennessee. And so uh, we send greetings from there from all of my team. So before I jump in, I want to look into the camera and say a big hello. We got Trove Heights fam watching in Alabama, watching in Houston, watching in Nashville, watching in Arizona. Come on. Can y'all help me give it up for our Trove Heights family? Thank y'all for hanging with us. Trove Heights fam, we love y'all. And thank y'all for letting us hang with you, New Anthem Church. Uh, we love Pastors John and Cece. They are incredible. I, I had the privilege to meet him about a year ago, about last June, so 13 months ago. They came into Hope City Church. We were the broadcast uh, campus pastors there, and when guests would come in from all over the country, we would get to host them. And so at the time, we knew that we were planting a church, but no one else knew. And so I was probing him with all these questions. He's probably like, why is this guy asking me all these questions? Because I'm trying to figure out what you know that I need to know, you know? And so when we stepped out and knew that we were getting ready to launch, he was one of the first people that I called, was your pastor. And I said, hey, man, just wanted to give you a life update. And I said, that's why I was there. He was like, I thought you were kind of weird when I met you the first time, you know, like asking me a bunch of questions. But I needed to know you guys are before us. And so you guys just bringing us up, allowing us to be here in your environment. Thank you. Your prayer team, by the way, let me just tell you, you got a strong prayer team. I mean, we went in the back before church and they, they just prayed over us, man. I was I'm like, let's go beat some bears with a switch. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ready to go. <laughs> We're excited to be here. And so I just want to honor you guys, man. Thank you for what you're doing. A year, almost a year in, and God is moving, man. God is moving in a powerful way. And thank you for letting us have this privilege and opportunity. It is always a privilege to stand in any, any environment. Every Thursday night, we go live as Trove Heights on uh, Facebook and Instagram live in my living room in a three-bedroom apartment in Nashville, Tennessee getting ready to launch a church. And even in that moment, just a few of us in our living room, I get in this place where I'm like, I can't believe you chose me, God. And all of you guys, you're here. Like, God, God chose you. And that's a blessing. It blows my mind. And so thank you for hanging with us today. And then my incredibly beautiful wife of now 11 years. We've been married for 11 years. Megan is here with me. And I would not do this with anybody else. It's incredible that we get to be a part of this funny story, and uh, you'll get to see more in a second. Before I jump in, I want to introduce you to my family. We brought a picture of them, I think, that we can throw up. And uh, so this is my, my family, my two little boys. This is, this is Makai. He's nine. This is Jordan. He's seven. He needs Jesus. We're still working on him. He's got some, he's a little crazy, but <laughs> that's our family. And we took this picture. We're getting ready to plant a church and we take this picture in the middle of COVID at the time living with my parents, like, God, this is not what I thought it was going to look like. But there we are and just having a good time getting ready to move to Nashville in that picture. Love our kids and uh, Brady and Jordan Smith. They're with our kids right now in Nashville. If y'all are watching right now, man, we love y'all. Thank you for doing what you're doing for us. And then this next picture, this is, this is amazing. I, I'm so excited to show you this. So this is me and my wife. Uh, you're going to see here in just a second. So that's us. That's yesterday. <laughs> and the reason I'm showing you this, this picture is not anything special. I mean, I think we were sitting in the airport when we took this picture yesterday. The reason I'm showing you this picture, this was amazing. He, uh, he reached out to me, I don't know, two months ago and was like, hey, come, come preach, come hang. I'm like, man, that would be amazing. I love it. He tells me what weekend. I circled the calendar. I'm like, bro, that is our anniversary. How cool would it be to preach on our anniversary? So we were coming in today so that I could preach on our anniversary. Oh, man, I thought that's so amazing. I'm so excited. I get to preach on my anniversary. And then it turns out that it's not our anniversary. <laughs> so, so Pastor John, he's like scheduling dinner with us for tonight. I'm like, bro, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'll do dinner with you on Saturday night because Sunday night is our anniversary. I'm going to take my wife to dinner. We, <laughs> we leave yesterday. We land in Detroit, take the, uh, take the phones off airplane mode, literally sitting in the plane. I have Facebook notifications I open up Facebook. One of the first things I do every day, and I would encourage you to do this if you never do this, go look at your memories from past years because you'll see how far God brought you. Like, he's brought us a long way. So I'm looking at the memories. He's still working on me. You're going to find out in a second. I see the memories, and I'm like, why last year did I celebrate my anniversary a day early? Why would I do that? I'm like, and two years ago I did it. And three, 
And 10 years ago, all 10 years, I'm like, what? And I started, I'm dying laughing. I got a, I've got a mask on, so you can't tell that I'm laughing, but I'm laughing. And then I literally, I paused and I looked at her. I said, uh, hey, baby, did you know that today is our anniversary? And she's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, look right here. I'm like, Facebook never lies. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> today is our anniversary. And we had this incredible laugh. We went and ate the worst lunch I think we've ever eaten on our anniversary. It was a horrible lunch. Service was terrible. There's birds like on the floor. It was amazing. <laughs> and then we go have dinner with them and we tell them the whole story. And I was like, we will never forget this weekend because it's, we thought we were preaching on our anniversary and plans changed. That's just what happened. So here we are preaching on our not anniversary. It was yesterday, but now we've been married 11 years and man, what a ride. Can't wait to share more with you about what God's done in our lives to this point. One thing I did learn about your pastors last night is that Pastor John does not like bees. And so we are kindred spirits in that uh, arena right there. We learned from experience, so, but love connecting with them. So glad we're able to be here with you guys today. Thank you for having us. It is a privilege. All you guys watching online, thank you for hanging. Thank you for allowing us to be here. I got a word that I believe God's going to move in today in a powerful way. I'm just going to jump right in today. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them. If you got your uh, iPhones, iPads, eyelids, whatever you got, wherever you're at, open one of those. We're going to go to God's word, and I got a word that has really been stirring in me because of the season that we're in, and we're all facing something in front of us. <laughs> Y'all remember going into 2020, and every pastor on the planet was like, hey, 2020 vision for 2020. We didn't see this coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, here we are, and we all got some stuff in front of us, and God has really downloaded something in me that I want to share with you that I believe will be some keys. So we're going to look at Joshua chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 2. And you can jump there with me. It says, God spoke to Joshua and he said, look sharp now. I'm reading out of the message. Look sharp now. I've already given Jericho to you along with its king and its crack troops. Here's what you're to do. I want you to march around the city. All your soldiers circle the city once. Repeat this for six days. Have seven priests carry seven ram's horn trumpets in front of the chest. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times, the priests blowing away on the trumpets. And then a long blast on the ram's horn and when you hear that, all the people are to shout at the top of their lungs. The city wall will collapse at once. All the people are to enter every man straight on in. Then fast forward to verse 20. The priests blew the trumpets. When the people heard the blast of the trumpets, they gave a thunderclap shout. The wall fell at once. The people rushed straight into the city and they took it. Let's pray real quick and we'll dive in. God, we love you. We thank you so much for who you are. God, and I'm just under the impression and the belief that in any environment, when we walk in and open our hearts, you will move. And so right here in this room, right, right there online, whatever area we're watching from, place we're watching in, bathroom, living room, kitchen, I don't care where we're at. God, right now we open our hearts to you and we ask you to move. We're here to encounter you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that story is a story that we've all heard over and over again, especially how many of y'all grew up in church? If you're in the room, grew up in church, if you're online, hey, and if you're online, like, wave your white hankies, like, we're going to have church, okay? This is what we do, all right? I grew up in church, so much so to the point that I had, like, the, uh, I had, like, the green felt board that you slap the stick, the, the figures on. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Like, in Sunday school, like, I grew up in real church, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, my dad was a pastor, and so this story goes all the way back to when I was a kid. I know everything about this story. If you didn't grow up in church, you have heard this story more than likely. Watch it online. You're, you may be like, I'm not a church person. Somehow you stumbled across, across this. God's got a word for you. Maybe or maybe you not, have not heard the story. I'm going to give you some keys here. But at the end of the day, they are going into the promised land. God has called them into the promised land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. Y'all, right now, I love some milk and honey. Come on, somebody. Like, they they got a, a land they're going into that's got some good treats. It's got some good stuff for them. And they're just on the way. They pull up to the Jordan River. And then, boom, problem. We had, but we had 2020 vision for 2020, and now the coronavirus, and now racial injustice, and now all the craziness. I don't understand. Maybe you, you, you got furloughed. You lost a job. You have no idea what tomorrow looks like. Unemployment, what's going to happen with that? What is the government doing? Life is crazy. Everybody's wearing a mask. It's like a movie. What is going on? This, my whole plan is derailed. 2020 wasn't supposed to look like this. This was a new decade. I had plans. And you're facing a Jericho in front of your promised land. We stepped out over a year ago to get ready to launch a church, talked with our pastor, Pastor Jeremy Foster there at Hope City in Houston. 
and he puts his blessing on it. So this is a year ago now, and we are so excited. Oh, we're going to launch a church in 2021. We know that God's always called us to this. I can't wait. Nashville, Tennessee, no money, no people. Nobody knows what's going on, but God did. And we couldn't see today. We couldn't see the coronavirus. 2020 was going to be amazing. And then this happened. But I want to tell you guys here in the room and everybody watching online, wherever you're at, God is not surprised by what's happening. He's not caught off guard. He's not sitting back like, oh, let me, let me brainstorm and figure out a new plan. God knew what was coming. And he called you and me for such a time as this. He knew what we were called to do well before we ever got here. He called us to plant a church for such a time as this. But there's a problem. How are we going to fix it? How are we going to pay the bills? Kids aren't going to school. We're homeschooling our kids because it's like masks all day. We don't know what to do. But God does. But there's a formula that I think we have to look at in this story that if we lean into it, I believe it can help us get to our promised land. Now, check it out. Your promised land is not just about you going to the promised land. It's also about you helping take other people to the promised land with you. Okay, so I'm going to point back to when Jesus called the disciples. When Jesus called every disciple, this is what he said. He rolled up, sees these dudes fishing, and he said, hey, you, you, come follow me, and I'm going to make you a fisher of men. It's called the great commission, not the great suggestion. You know what I'm saying? Like, we are called to be fishers of men. And if we're not fishing for people, are we following Jesus? That's the question I step back and ask myself. I'm called to a promised land. God has good things for me. But every plan that God gives you, it's all throughout Scripture, it's going to be to take somebody else with you. Because I'm just under the impression that we can populate heaven and plunder hell. Y'all know what I'm saying? Like, I believe we can do that, but it's going to take all of us together. To not only aim at our promised land, but say, come on, bro, come with me. I got you. And that's why this is so important. And so I want to look back at that very first verse in verse 2. And there's a phrase that jumps out. And this is the title of my message. And you can tap your neighbor. If you're right there, look at your wife, look at your husband, look at your kids. Say, look sharp now. Look sharp now. Look sharp now. Look sharp now. This is exactly what he says. God spoke to Joshua and he said, look sharp now. I've given Jericho to you already. What does that mean? Look sharp now. <laughs> it sounds like one of them weird phrases I heard my granddad say. Like, look, look sharp now. I don't even know what that means. So I got curious, and I went and looked, and in the Webster's Dictionary, you can actually find an actual definition of what look sharp means, and it means to act quickly or to hurry. Now, I think this is backwards from what we would think. I'm rolling to the promised land. Oh, I'm excited, and then boom, Jericho in the way, coronavirus, whatever the case may be, loss of job, I've been furloughed, kids' school, I don't know what's going on. What in the world am I going to do? I think I need to press pause. We're launching a church, God, and we can't launch a church in coronavirus. It's time to press pause. And God says, no, 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 no. Look sharp now. I need you to act quickly. I need you to hurry. We're taking people to the promised land. We can't wait for this. No matter what's in front of us, we got to go. And I think there's three keys that we have to do in order to do this. And the first thing, write this down. I'm going to give you three points. Very easy to remember. Number one is remember your who. Remember your who. This is all about your source, okay? I'm going to rewind a little bit. If you look at Joshua 6.2, he said this. Look sharp now, I've already given Jericho to you. Okay, now let's rewind to Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. It says, now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and he saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and he asked, he said, are you for us or are you for our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence, and he asked him, What message does my Lord have for your servant? And the commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. <laughs> now, I learned so much looking at this passage. So I'm under the impression that anytime you look at Scripture to find real context, you got to go to what happened before and after whatever you're reading. Uh, like, here's a little key. This will be practical. You can write this in your notes. Is, is anytime you see a therefore, you need to go find out what it's there for. Like, it's scripture, sometimes you read a verse and you're like, blessed and highly favored, but the, verse, the next verse, they're killing people. You're like, whoa. Like, you got to figure out what's really going on here. So I go dive into Joshua 5. How did we get here? And I love this. They're, they're going to the promised land. Joshua's so focused on the mission. He's so focused on what God's called him to do and where he's got to go. And then he sees the angel of the army of the Lord. Now, I don't know what the angel of the army of the Lord looks like, the leader of the army of the Lord looks like, but I would imagine he's not going to look like me and you rolling up in here. I picture like a big, like, a big heart, like a, and he's got a sword of fire, and I would be like, whoa, you know what I'm saying? That's what I would picture. 
Now, I don't know if that's what Joshua saw, but look at his reply. Are you for us or are you for our enemies? <laughs> then what does he say? Hey, neither. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I've now come. This is what ends up happening. He stops and he says, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I need you to remember your who. This is not about, God, how, are, are you going to get me through coronavirus or not? No, 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 no. No, no, no. This is not your plan. This is God's plan. And God is saying, it's not about me stepping up and doing what you need me to do. It's about you stepping in to my plan and going to accomplish what I've called you to accomplish and taking some people with you. It is not about are you for us or for them. This is about I am here and this is holy ground. And that's what Joshua points back to. He's like, well, we got to take Jericho. How's God going to help me make that happen? How are you, are you going to help me make that happen? Because if not, I'm going to need you to step out of my way. And this is what we do with God. God, 2020 was supposed to look this way, and it's not. So you know what? I'll come back to you after I figure this out, if you're for me or, or for somebody else. I'll come back to you once I figure this out. I got bills to pay. Medically, I don't know what's going on with me. I'm terrified. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Are you for us or are you for them? No, 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 no. I need you to remember who I am. Remember your source. Your source alone is God. My source alone is God. I'm going to tell you this. I gave my life to Jesus over seven years ago, and the only reason I'm anything that I am today is because of my source, not because of my power. I, I could try to wear the coolest shoes I want to wear and say the coolest stuff I want to say. At the end of the day, there is no power there unless I stop and recognize that I'm on holy ground. That's where the power comes from. I'm on holy ground. you got to quit asking God if he's going to be for you and declare that you're going to be for him. That is the key. And when you do that and you come into agreement, then you can say, uh, God, I'm not asking you to use me anymore. You know what? I'm going to ask me. I'm going to step into what you've called me to do. And, okay, let's go. I'm not going to use you. I'm going to let you use me. That's what this is all about. What are you praying for? What are you believing for? What is the thing that you're most anxious about right now? Because what you fear the most shows where you uh, trust God the least. I, God, I got, some, I got some scary stuff going on, but God needs you to remember. No, 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 it's not about are you for us or for them. It's about who am I? He is I am. Meaning your doctor's bill, he is that. Meaning whatever you need for your kids, he is that. Meaning whatever you thought 2020 was going to be and you don't know how you're going to get there, he is that. He is I am. I am that I am. It's not about are you going to get me through this or not. It's about, God, I, here I am. I'm taking my sandals off. I'm on holy ground. What do you want me to do, Holy Spirit? That is what this is all about. That's the first piece. We've got to stop trying to grasp. We've got to stop trying to do things and grasp the magnificence of the presence of God. And at the end of the day, if I never gave you another point, if I could only stand on a stage and say one thing, it would be that. Remember who your source is. Oh, remember who your source is. I have no power in me unless I'm filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the difference maker. That's the difference maker. So we get caught up in asking God, are you going to do this? No, 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 no. I serve a God who heals and delivers and redeems and he parts waters and he brings people back to life. And he does things that only God can do. That's the God I serve. That's the God I serve. But we all have these moments where we have to step back and we have to go, okay, you're right, it's not about me, it's about you. I'm going to hit my knees because I'm on holy ground. Speak, your servant's listening. That's what this is all about. We can't be so focused on our enemies that we forget to be submitted to God because the, we are only going to be as powerful as we are submitted to God. <laughs> That's, I don't care how old you are, I don't care how long you've been doing what you're doing, I don't care how long you've been a Christian. At any point in time, we could take the wheel if we wanted to. We were reading in our devotional this morning. We do a devotional with our whole team, 60 of us. Love my Trove Heights family. And this morning, that's literally what our devotion was talking about, is you have the opportunity to sit in the driver's seat if you want to. <laughs> Don't do it. It's not about you. It's about God. Let him, let him drive. <laughs> Jesus, take. I'm not going to be a singer, but my wife loves Carrie Underwood, so that, I came up with that song. I won't ever do that again. It's fine. I won't do that next service. All right, let me give you a couple of scriptures that remind you that God is your resource. I don't want to just tell you, let scripture tell you. Don't take my word for it, take God's word for it. All right, Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't like anything, only if he's my shepherd. It's contingent upon that piece. Isaiah 58, 11, the Lord will guide you continually and he'll satisfy your soul in dry places. He'll make, your strong, he'll make your bones strong and you shall be like a water garden, like a spring of water whose waters don't fall. The Lord will guide you. It's contingent upon the Lord guiding you. 
Not you guiding you and saying, Jesus, come be a part of my plan. Who's your source? Remember who your source is today. That's what changes everything. Matthew 6, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And everything else will be added. Seek first. Seek first. Not how are you going to get me through this? Are you on my team? Are you for me or are you for them? No. Seek first. Let the Lord guide you. Like you. Let him be your shepherd. That's the difference maker. If we don't get that right, we don't get anything right. I don't care where you're at. Watching, listening, stage of life, state of life, that is the difference maker. Remember your who. I remember a specific story. Um, we're living in Moody, Alabama, a suburb outside of Birmingham at the time. We were a part of Church of the Highlands. I went to ministry school at Highlands College. This is before we go to Houston. This is probably 2014, 2015. And financially, it was a rough season. I'm in the middle of ministry school. She's leading worship at this incredible church. And financially, it was a struggle. Two little kids, one toddler. Like, it was, it was rough. And I remember we're two days to payday, and like your boy is eating ice sandwiches. You know what I'm talking about? Like that's what we're that's what we're getting ready to do. Like, hey baby, we got another piece of bread for the ice. You know what I'm saying? Like we're just trying to make it till Friday. <laughs> and I remember thinking, how am I going to get to work? I'm trying to. I'm like, I'm gonna have to siphon some gas or something. I don't know, just to get to work. You know, like we're gonna make it. But it was tough. We had no idea what it was gonna look like, and financially, it was a crazy world we were living in. And I remember one day I came home. This was our usual practice. One car at the time. Again, who's your source? One car at the time. I'm in sales. I'm all over the place. Thursday uh, afternoons, she would have worship practice at the church. So I would have to make a way where she would get there. I'd have to meet her there. I'd have to pick up the kids after work and then go back home so she could save her worship practice. And I'd have to go pick her back up that night. Like it just, it made no sense. This, God, are you for us or are you for our enemy? No, 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 no. Just remember who your source is. And I remember I pick up the kids one day and I'm rolling home two days away from payday hoping that I got bread for the ice sandwich when I get in the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I'm at. And I remember pulling in the driveway, and I go to the mailbox like I would any other normal day. And I open the mailbox, and on the top of the mail is a, it's an envelope with no stamp and scribble on it. Now, let me just say, if you find that in your mailbox, be careful. You don't know what's in that. Like, it didn't come from the mailman. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm real, I'm like, what is this, you know? Well, I get in the house and I open it. I put the kids down. I'm real curious. I'm like, I, I, I drop everything. What in the world is this? I open it. I pull out a letter, trifold, and $100 bills start pouring out of this envelope. <laughs> $1,000 in our mailbox in a note that read, hey, Kevin and Megan, just wanted you guys to know you're making a difference. God sees you. He's pleased with you and he's going to take care of you. And P.S., don't try to figure out who this is because you'll never find out. And we still to this day have never figured out who did this. <laughs> God is my source. God is my strength. God is my joy. If I got God, I got anything. If you let God guide you, everything will change. Luke 10, 38. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end this point with this. Luke 10, 38. You see Mary and Martha, these two sisters, Jesus rolls up in the house. And he's sitting there, and Martha's just running around like crazy, serving, serving, serving. Oh, we got to do this. And Mary is just chilling at Jesus' feet. Now, how many of y'all like to work? How many of y'all are like work ethic, hard work, you like work? And how many of y'all are like, I'd rather sit at somebody's feet? You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's wired a different way. Martha rolls in, and she's like, oh, Jesus, you better tell her to get in the kitchen with me. This is not cool at all. I'm in here doing all this stuff. I'm desking, I'm cooking. And this is Jesus' reply. I love this. this. This hammered me. Verse 41 of Luke 10. Martha, 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 you are worried and bothered and anxious about so many things. Hone in on this. But only one thing is necessary. <laughs> if we don't get the necessary thing right, we don't get anything right. And if sitting at the feet of Jesus is inconvenient for you, then the power of God is inconvenient for your life. It comes from sitting at the, uh, at the feet of Jesus. I've got to remember what is the necessary thing. Remember who your source is. Strength doesn't give you victory. Dependence on God doesn't. If anything's going to happen in your world, it's going to happen in the presence of God. The worst that the presence of God can do is change your life forever. That's the worst. <laughs> That's the worst. You've got to remember who your source is. Remember your who. Only one thing is necessary. Second thing is you've you got to focus on what to do. Number one, remember your who. Number two, focus on what to do. He gives him very clear instructions. How many of y'all, let me talk to the men for a second. How many of y'all men build stuff without the instructions? I, look, your boy does. I, I built some stuff the wrong way in my life. Let me just say that. How many of y'all uh, wives are like, why don't you ever read the instructions? Like, I get that a lot, okay? Pastor Cece, she said, uh, yeah, that's me. 
<laughs> Check these out. I love these so much. Listen, these are actual instructions on actual products, y'all. This blows my mind. On a Sears hair dryer, do not use while sleeping. <laughs> what? Whoever tried that to make them have to write that instruction, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> on a bar of dial soap, directions, use like regular soap, not like non-regular soap. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what is regular soap? I don't know. On a hotel-provided shower cap in a box, fits one head. <laughs> Which one of y'all tried to put that on two of y'all's? I don't know. Fits, fits one head. <laughs> on Marks and Spencer bread pudding, products will be hot after heating. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> be careful. On packaging for a Rowenta iron, do not iron clothes on body. I I don't even know how you do that. <laughs> My thing is, somebody had to do this stuff in order for them to have to say, I don't like what it. <laughs> On boots, children's cough medicine. Do not drive car or operate machinery. Children's cough medicine. <laughs> Moms, y'all get it together. Dads, come on. <laughs> On a string of Christmas lights for indoor or outdoor use only, not in between, indoor or out. out. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't, on a chainsaw, do not attempt to stop chain with your hands. Sir, please, don't do, don't do that. Uh, these last couple are amazing. On the bottom of a cola bottle, do not open here. <laughs> on a muffin packet, remove wrapper, open mouth, insert muffin, eat. Now that's some good instructions right there. Your boy needs some instructions. <laughs> on a push along lawnmower, not to be used as a hedge trimmer. What it, what, I, I don't even know how you leverage that. I, don't, I have no idea. On a mattress, oh, on a mattress, do not attempt to swallow. <laughs> what are we feeding, bears? I don't know, what, what is that? <laughs> I, I put a, lo a lot of stuff together wrong in my life. Now, my life was when I grew up in church, and then for 10 years I ran as far away from God as I could be. And I tried it my own way without the instructions. Let me just tell you, it doesn't work. It doesn't work without the instructions. Use the instructions. You got to look at focusing on what to do. Go back to Joshua chapter 6, verses two. verse 2. He says, I've already given Jerry's code to you. Here's what you are to do. I'm going to hone in on just the first sentence. He lays out some very specific instructions. God spoke to Joshua. Look sharp now. I've already given it to you. Then he says, march around the city. March. Circle the city once. Repeat this for six days. March. Circle. Repeat. March. Circle. Repeat, march, circle, repeat, on and on. And a whoa, come on, God, there's a shortcut. There's, there's got to be an easier way. There's got to be a shortcut. This doesn't make any sense. Well, go into verse 10, and Joshua tells him, hey, don't shout. In fact, don't even speak. Like, he's even to the point like that. Stop talking. Focus on what to do. Focus on what to do. Proverbs 4.13 says it like this. Hold on to instruction. Don't let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Follow the instructions. Proverbs 10, 17. Whoever heeds instruction is on the path to life, but he who rejects reproof leads others astray. <laughs> Messing up the directions doesn't just not help you. It, it messes up everybody else too. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You've heard this verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your understanding. You think you know the way, but there's instructions for a reason. God knows things you don't know. Facts about Jericho. So Jericho, they say, was about eight acres. I'm about to blow some of your minds. I was blown when I started studying this. I always thought of Jericho as like this big, powerful city, but it was actually only about eight acres in size, about 1,000 to 2,000 people, they say. The, the Israelites were about 2 million people at this time, meaning this thing was not a massive deal in front of their face. It was actually just a little hiccup right in front of them, but they knew they had to get rid of it in order to get to the promised land. The walls were massive. They outnumber them 2,000 to one. This, this is not some crazy, like, oh, what are we going to do? They just had to figure out, oh, this thing is in my way. 2020 was going good. Now coronavirus is in my way. What am I going to do? God, let me remind you that God's promised land is still out there for you. Coronavirus didn't change anything. The, the promises of God never change, but they're optional. You can have them if you want them. It's all determined by what are you going to do beyond this point. He looks at them. They, they could have honestly done whatever they want, but this is what they used to do back then. These cities would have these massive walls, and they could go into them without God. They would build these bridges. They would do this thing. It would take six months. So at the end of the day, they could have done it on their own. But look, God's instructions seem crazy, but it's a lot shorter to your destination than your plan would have been. 
<laughs> I'm just believing that through this coronavirus, God is going to do things that we never thought imaginable. And this is not a mess up in our plan. This is an opportunity for the power of God to show up is what it is. This is an opportunity for God to show up in your life. It's hard to follow plans when you got one of your own. It's hard to follow God's plan. And this, this is really what stuck out to me. Perhaps the greatest battle that Joshua and his men had to fight was not on the outside of them, but on the inside of them. That, God, I'm not going to try it my own way. I'm going to submit to your way and your will. Number one, you got to remember your who. And number two, got to focus on what to do. And then number three, you just got to follow through. It's, it's, it's laid out. Okay, God, I'm here. I'm in prayer. I'm in prayer. I'm reading the word every day. I'm in prayer. Okay, okay. I, God, I, I know what you're calling me to do. Now, Follow through. Just follow through. I love the way that it says this. Follow through actually means to press on in an activity or process, especially to a conclusion. <laughs> the season in front of you, there's a conclusion to it. And you're going to be to greater things. But you got to follow through. Joshua 6, 12. This is exactly what Joshua does. He downloads the instructions, and it says, Joshua got up early the next morning. I'm going to leave it right there. Joshua got up the early next, the next morning. He gathered all the people. He said, here's what we're going to do. It didn't say he got up early a week later. Or a month later, remember God told him to look sharp now. Get ready. I, you got to go hurry. You got to come on. Hurry up offense. You got to move. So he didn't waste any time. I got up early. And your faith, let me check, let me check this out. This, this point is all about your faith. Follow through. Your faith will determine your follow through. Your faith will determine how quickly you get to your destination. Oh, I, if you don't believe me, it's this. Check this out. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, I'm going to believe it, but I don't see it. I don't see it. But listen, anytime you're walking with God, you will always hear something before you see something. You got to listen to what he told you, and then you move. You follow through. You got to follow through. Romans 10, 17, you need more faith in order to see, the, see past what we're looking at in our world? Then this is what you got to do. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Get in the word. You don't have the right word. The person next to you didn't have the right word, but God's word always has the right word. Every time. But you got to lean in, and you have to follow through. How many of y'all remember that song? I'm about to mess you up a little bit here. <laughs> How many of y'all heard that song? Uh, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came a tumble. Come on, y'all church people in the house. Let's go. I grew up on that song. Who wrote that song? That's ridiculous. <laughs> what is that? That song is not biblically accurate at all. Joshua fought and the walls came down. That is not biblically accurate. Let me tell you why. Hebrews 11.30 says it like this. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, you got to grasp this. You got to remember your who. Then you got to focus on what to do. And then you just got to follow through. What is your faith like inside of you? Because if you don't have any faith, you don't have the foundation. Your faith will determine your follow through. And without the follow through to conclusion, God's plan doesn't work. You have to follow through. Quit trying to make sense of God and just obey him. Stop praying about what he told you. If he told you to do it, man, just go. I promise you won't be disappointed. You're never losing an exchange with God. You will not be disappointed if you just follow through. God is saying, I know you've already done this, but now I need you to do this. There's more steps to the instructions. And I believe that we can get through the, corona, the coronavirus and everything we're looking at. If you lost a job, if you're trying to get a job, if you're trying to figure out how to pay bills, God is your source. A thousand dollars could show up in your mailbox tomorrow, but not if you're not following Jesus. Remember your who. Remember it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. A life with Jesus is all about faith. Then focus on what to do. He, he told, some of you right now, watching online in this room, you know God told you something. And you've been thinking about it, and you've been sitting back, and you've been praying. Stop praying, just go. Just, just go. Look sharp now. Look sharp now. It's time to get up and go. Get up early the next morning. Let's go. Let's hit our knees. Let's say, God, I'm all in. That is what changes everything. And here's why. Don't forget your why. There's a promised land not just for you, but for your family and for your kids and for the people at your workplace and for the people in your environment that are so lost. There's a promised land for them. I love this. David is handing over his uh, kingdom to Solomon, his son. First Chronicles 28. Oh, this, y'all, this fires me up. And you, Solomon, my son, get to know all, well your father's God. Serve him with a whole heart, eager mind, for God examines every heart. And then check this out. If you seek him, he'll make sure that you find him. But if you abandon him, he'll leave you for good. Look sharp now. Look sharp now. God has chosen you to build his holy house. Be brave, determined, and do it. Just go do it. 
There's no reason to wait. You've got the God of all creation on your side. He created everything that you see. Everything that you've been given to this point was not by your work. It was by God. Everything has been given to you by God. He's your source. He's given you some instructions. Focus on what to do. Don't try to figure out a different way. Don't look at it one time and say, I, I remember how to do that. And then you're missing a bolt at the end of the progress, at the end of the process. you got to keep going. Focus on what to do. And then just follow through. Don't waste time. Act sharp. Look sharp. Go. Do it now. Remember your who. Submit to the source. Focus on what to do. Follow the instructions. And then just follow through. Exercise your faith. If you need more faith, Romans 10, 17, go get in the Word. He will build your faith. It comes by hearing the Word of God. Get around people that sharpen you up. Get in groups here at New Anthem Church. Get baptized. Get on the team. Start serving. God will sharpen you. I'm telling you. He will. It's a byproduct. But you got to follow through. March, circle, repeat. March, circle, repeat. March, circle, repeat. Repeat. I know this makes no sense, but I need you to march, circle, repeat. I know your kid's far away from God, but I need you to march, circle, repeat. I know that your job is looking crazy and dim, but I need you to march, circle, repeat. I just need you to keep praying. I just need you to keep getting in the Word. I need you to march, circle, repeat. There's a plan. Just follow through. Remember your source. Today, you might, you might need to go back to where you're at, watching online. You might need to drop to your knees right there and say, God, I'm sorry. I've tried it my own way. It's not working. I remember you're my who. You're my source. You're my source. I'm going to do what you asked me to do. I'm going to follow through. And this is why. And we'll close with this. June 3rd, 2013, I submitted my life to Jesus. I grew up in church until I was 18 years old. I knew all about God, but I didn't really know God. And then for 10 years, I searched high and low for everything the world had to offer. Everything the world had to offer. I, I tried a lot of sin. I was good at sin, y'all. <laughs> I was good at it. I was so blinded because I was missing my source. And God began to knock on my heart because in 2012, I was diagnosed with stage four cancer. My wife, we find out she's pregnant five days before I start chemotherapy. Let me just tell you, 2012 was the hardest year of our lives. And that is the year that we begin to turn our attention and focus to submit to the right source. And because of that today, here I am over seven years later, and I get to stand in front of people and say, come on, remember your who. Focus on what to do and then just follow through. But it all came from even deeper than that. Remember, you don't just have a promised land. You're taking people to their promised land. I have praying parents. And mom and dad, I know you're watching. I love you so much. If I didn't have parents who prayed, if I didn't have people who had the source and focused on what to do and followed through and they just marked circle repeat, I know he looks crazy. I know he just almost died. I know he should be in debt or in jail, but I'm going to march circle repeat. I'm going to march circle repeat. I'm going to march circle repeat. And God will move in your life, I'm telling you. He'll move in your life right there wherever you're at. Let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. Let's remember the source here for just a moment. I don't know what room you're in watching a line. <laughs> I don't know what state you're in. I don't know what state your life is in. Or maybe you're in this room and you're just trying to get by. I'm just, I'm pressing pause. I'm just waiting for this coronavirus thing to end. It's got to change at some point. No, 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 no. Don't wait for it to change. You change. Remember your source. <laughs> Remember your who. Focus on what to do and then just follow through. Everything will change. March, circle, repeat. Look sharp now. Let's go. And maybe you're in this room and you need to just stop for a second and recommit that, okay, God, I'm going to stop. I haven't, I've, I've been doing my own thing. I'm, I, I need to just go back to my source. I'm, I'm living for you. I'm going to heaven. Everything's good. But I haven't been spending time with the source. And maybe you need to recommit that. So right now, God, everybody watching the line, everybody in this room, God, I pray that something is sparked and ignited in us, God. Without you, we have nothing. One thing is necessary. And so today, God, we just take a moment collectively as a body and we recommit to you. We remember the source today, God. We're going to plug into the source. And we pray for your supernatural power to come into our lives and change our kids and our finances and our health. God, we plug into the source today. And we commit that to you in Jesus' name. And maybe you're watching right there. Maybe you're in the room and you, you know, you know what? I've never even plugged into the source. I don't have the who. I don't know anything about that. And you know you need Jesus in your life. I'm telling you, he can change everything in a moment. The Bible says that while you were a sinner, Christ died for you. While you didn't want it, while you didn't care about it, while you didn't think you needed him, he still died for you. And today he's just standing at the door and knocking. All you got to do is open it. And I'm going to give you that opportunity right here and right now before Pastor John comes to make the greatest decision that you could ever make. Don't, don't wait. 
You never lose an exchange with God. It's always better with Jesus. So right now, wherever you're at, if that's you, if you're in the room, if you're online, just raise your hand right there where you're at. One, two, three, just raise your hand right there where you're at, wherever you're at. God sees you. It's not about anybody else seeing you. God sees you. And the Bible says that when you acknowledge him, he will acknowledge you. And so then just pray a prayer like this with me. Say something like, Jesus, today I give you my life. Today I plug into the source. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you're Lord, you're Savior, and I'm gonna live for you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Come on, because we celebrate people that just said yes to Jesus in this room online. Come on, man. Thank y'all for having us. God is good. Can we give him one more shout of praise today? Come on, Jesus. Amen, amen. Come on, were you blessed by that today, church? Amen. Hey, we're actually going to, hey, Pastor Kevin, come on out. Uh, we we want to pray for you real quick before uh, you go. And uh, we just, uh, like I said, we're partnering with you, not just in prayer, but man, we believe that you do have an anointing and a call of God on your life. And and Megan, you can come on up too. And uh, we're, we're so grateful for all the work that you're going to do. And God is going to use you uh, for in Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, we are a church that, that isn't just about us. We're not just about our own thing and, and what we have going on here. But we're excited about all that God is doing. And we're just a little, little tiny church. And we're just a, a little movement here in Mount Clemens and not even a year old. And God has um, positioned us to sow into and to bless other churches churches. And so uh, we just, we want to encourage you guys with something and, and present you guys with a check. Uh, and this is a, we finally got to do the big check thing, which I'm really excited about. So here's some $3,000 for your guys' uh, launch budget. We, uh, you know, I actually just, I've never, I've never been able to give a giant check to someone. So that was the, that's the real reason. a giant check. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, it's Publishers Clearinghouse, it's just a little bit less. Um, we love you guys, we're excited. Can you just reach out a hand right now? Let's, let's just pray over these two. Father God, we just thank you for uh, Pastor uh, Kevin, Pastor Megan, Lucas, and uh, we pray over the city of Nashville. We pray for Trove Heights Church, and we know that your best is ahead, that the best is yet to come, that we don't have to look around at everything, all the craziness, all the chaos going on in our world. We can keep our eyes fixed on you and know that your plan is to have people uh, realize and recognize you. We're going to, that marriages are going to be restored, that families are going to be, be restored on behalf of Trove Heights Church. So we pray a special blessing and anointing. Uh, we believe that even uh, these few dollars that we were able to give are going to go uh, just, just like the loaves and fishes are going to be able to feed and provide for dozens, maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of people for your glory and your honor. So God, we're for everyone in the room today and everyone tuned in online, we pray a special blessing and anointing. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. Come on, one more time for the Lucases.